This video is sponsored by Squarespace. In last week's video, I talked about my disappointment with the whole current Games Workshop situation, specifically the AOS rules, paywalls, and the kill team price hikes. And predictably, in the comments section, the most common response was, yeah, don't buy from Games Workshop play other games instead, and support other creators who actually care, or at least seem to care, about their audience. And yes, I agree, we should buy less from the larger companies and support the smaller companies, paint miniatures from indie games, or at least some of the alternative companies out there. But if you're a veteran of this channel, you probably already know that. At least half of my content over the past two years, probably a lot more than that, features me painting and or talking about non-Games Workshop products. Whether it's Warcrow, Infinity, Snack 28, Heroescape, Marvel Crisis Protocol, Star Wars Shatterpoint, Grave Trigger, or any of the other various games that I've covered over the past few years, the majority of my painting output is non-Games Workshop stuff. However, I have noticed an interesting pattern when I make these painting videos or opinion videos about other games that aren't Games Workshop, they unfortunately tend to get about half the views of a video that does feature Games Workshop. Whereas when I publish a video like this, or this, or this, where I am talking about a current Games Workshop issue, those videos tend to get double the views or more and those are the kind of videos that pay my bills at the end of the day. So it's a little bit tricky, isn't it? As this channel isn't just my hobby, it's also my main source of income. And to stop talking about Games Workshop entirely, that would be like a Magic the Gathering channel who dabbles in other TCGs, just, just deciding to make a flesh and blood channel instead and just stop talking about Magic. It's just not really financially viable, and statistically, it seems to not be what my audience wants. But even more than this, I'm not just doing it for the numbers, I like talking about Games Workshop. I like Games Workshop models, I like some of the games, and I have a huge passion for the company's legacy, history, and effect on the rest of the gaming industry. So to stop talking about them entirely, that's just not really what I want to do. And as I've started to branch out into my local community and I've started to play miniatures games with actual physical human beings in the real world, I know, it's wild to think about, I am finding that they are mostly only into 40k and Kill Team as well. And sure, I could seek out other people to play non-Games Workshop games with, but I would much rather play with the friend group that I already have, people I already like. We've even started a weekly Warhammer club where we paint together and sometimes play games. It's very cute, I highly recommend it. We're doing an Escalation League right now where we each slowly build up our various armies. I'm playing Orcs if you were curious and it's been a lot of fun. I hope to document that a little bit on the channel. But yeah, our local community, it's mostly Warhammer focused or at least Games Workshop focused. That tends to be the models that everyone already owns, the lore that everyone's already familiar with, and the models and world that everyone seems to have a pre-existing passion for. I do try my best to advocate for non-Games Workshop games. I've been painting up some Warcrow recently. I've been painting up some Marvel Crisis Protocol so that I do have sets for those games fully painted when I do eventually demo those to my friends and try and get them into those games as well. But I've noticed that it can be rather difficult to get someone into a second miniatures game, a second ecosystem, when they already have hundreds of dollars and perhaps hundreds of hours invested painting into their Warhammer armies. But you know what won't cost you hundreds of dollars and won't take you hundreds of hours to paint? That's right, it's this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one website and hosting platform that I've been using for just a little bit over a decade now for all of my website needs. You just pick from one of their gorgeously designed pre-made templates or build your own template from scratch using their brand new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprints. 
I've been using my current Squarespace website for quite a while now to host a gallery of my painted miniatures, all of my painting reference documents, as well as an online store which accepts a variety of flexible payment options. So if you need a website, why not check out squarespace.com today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Dana Howell for 10% off your very first purchase of a website or domain. But yeah, like I was saying, I think it's incredibly difficult to get someone into a second miniatures game, especially when painting and playing with miniatures might not be their main primary hobby to begin with. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of these alternative games aren't always cheaper than Games Workshop either. So yeah, if you've been watching this channel for a while, if you know me, you know that I am constantly trying to feature non-GW stuff on this channel. I do this as often as I can, and in my personal painting life, I would say at least 50% of the models I paint are not Games Workshop models. But beyond that, I think unfortunately Games Workshop is always going to be the main focus of our tabletop hobby, both online and in person, much like how Dungeons & Dragons is always probably going to be the main focus of the role-playing tabletop hobby. So to ask me to just stop buying their products, stop commenting on their actions, or to boycott them is unfortunately just not really realistic at this time in our hobby's existence. Plus, like I said, I like Warhammer. I like the IP. I am a fan of it that this channel wouldn't exist without Warhammer. And like a lot of things, just because this IP is currently owned by an immoral publicly traded company and most of the profits go to their CEO, doesn't mean we should suddenly stop being a fan of it if it's something we love. A lot of properties that I like are currently owned by Disney, for example. But just because their current output for those properties isn't great doesn't mean I stop being a fan of those properties. It just means I'm a little bit more picky about the stuff that I consume, and I'm often consuming the retro stuff or the old stuff in the catalog, often like I do with Games Workshop. And I think this point is super important. Hobbies are creative endeavors, they're supposed to be fun. And I think decoupling the company that currently owns a piece of media from the media itself is a super important distinction to make. Does the 41st millennium, the old world, and heck, even the mortal realms currently belong to a publicly traded company? Technically, legally, yes, but like a lot of things that have existed for more than a decade, the longer it exists, the more it really belongs to the community. The company may own the products, but they don't own our own fan fiction that we create in our homes. They don't own how we want to engage with the products we've already bought. And more than that, I think it's okay to still remain a fan of a thing while being extremely critical of the current company that owns it. In fact, I think that might be the healthiest attitude to have, as even if you are a fan of an indie creator, it's still not a good thing to just blindly consume everything they create. You should still be critical of your consumption. It's good to be selective about what you buy and what you spend your time on. So that's about it for today. I just wanted to address this subject because I find whenever I'm critical of Games Workshop, I tend to get a lot of comments just telling me to boycott the game, try other games. I don't want a hamburger, guys. I want a Big Mac. Also, before we go, I would like to address a few corrections, a few things I was either wrong about or just didn't know about that add context to the last video on the channel. Number one, it seems like the rules for the new edition of Kill Team are all free online now. This wasn't the case as of the publication of that last video, but the new rules for Kill Team, all the new Kill Teams, are currently free online. So I thought this was worth bringing up. As it turns out, you do not need to buy those new card packs. I don't think you even need to buy the new rulebook, as there is a brand new app, which is free as well. Nice job, Games Workshop. That's right, unlike Age of Sigmar and 40k, Kill Team has a free app with all of the rules for all the Kill Teams in it. 
pretty cool. I haven't tried this app out yet, but as we speak, as of the day when this video will be going live, I should be over at my friend's house trying out the new app with our first game of the new Kill Team Edition. So I'll let you know what I think after I test it out. The other thing that a lot of people in the comments section of that previous video wanted me to make note of is that while a lot of the current Age of Sigmar rules are behind a paywall, notably all of the rules for Spearhead are free online. So I thought that was worth noting as Spearhead is the game mode I'm most interested in and the game mode that is being pushed for beginners to play. So it's good that those rules are free online. Good job on that. I wasn't aware of that. Thank you for all of the corrections and comments on that previous video. I really do appreciate it. And if you have any thoughts about this video, let me know once again down in the comments. Before we go, I would like to extend a huge thank you to all of our wonderful patrons over on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. Thank you for watching, and I will see all of you in the next video.